you get jerked to? You mean someone seemed to be a jerk? Yeah, it's not a jerk, I'll give you that. But you go hand in hand. Anyway, I never asked you to be subject to my music. What's the occasion? Is this like a festival thing or something? Well, I mean, look, it's obviously over. But I guess any occasion's as good as another for people to congregate. Okay, then. Then what are you doing here? What does it look like I'm doing? Looks like you're just trying to be a jerk. Yeah, well, I can't very well do it while you're bothering me, so... But you need me, or at least someone to be a jerk to. You mean someone to whom to be a jerk? Okay, well, you're a smart jerk, I'll give you that. Yeah. Well, two go hand in hand, so... Anyways, I never asked for you to be subject to my jerky. There's no need for a beef. Just have a dry sense of humor, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Tough luck. Hey, do you play any instruments? Hey, uh, are you sure we're supposed to be doing this? I'm supposed to? Does that even matter? Just get on drum box. I mean, cause, you know, it's just, you know, it's all this. Here, just drink that. What is it? <coughs> is that alcoholic? Where are we playing? Just follow me. That was awesome. We're jamming. I want to hear that song ends. Why'd you stop? I just didn't feel like playing anymore. I mean, you weren't really my concern when I started playing, so why should be when I stop? Okay, valid point, I guess. Anyway, uh, I have to go to the store, so I guess I'll see you later. You're a really good drummer, though. Most drummers are, like, overpowering. Like, take over. You're just, like, nice and mellow. Yeah, well, I'm afraid to think of myself as an accompanist. You know, I don't want to steal it on his thunder. So, um, so, do you want to ride to the store? I'm just, nah. like, parked right there, you know? Nah, I can walk. Okay, I'm just gonna... Well, if you insist... Orson Hymat, right? Yep. Care for a game of here? 
Sure, why not? Hey, um, can't smoke in here. You know, parents' car and stuff. Oh yeah, I love this song. Are you serious? Yeah, bro. It's like, it's so catchy. So is gonorrhea, but there's medicine for that. Did you just make that a preset? Dude, no, this is my parents' car. They make the rules. You can't make do stuff like that. I don't really care what music you listen to. I just care what music I listen to. Okay, but, I mean, I don't really think that yeah, you can... Yeah, yeah, whatever. You should, you should probably castle, by the way. What? Oh. Uh, why'd you tell me that? You could have won in, like, the next move. Yeah, well... I just don't play like that. I'd rather lose and learn something than just checkmate you in five moves without even trying, you know? That's weird. It's not how I play games at all. Yeah. But you could. And, I mean, I could play to win just as easily. But I've just created these little preferences for myself that make up my personality. And, you know, I, I call that who I am. And I even, like, persecute other people for having different beliefs and feel an urge to, like, correct their lifestyle or perspective. You know, it's... it's all... I don't know, I feel like a tendency to even, like, think that there's a right answer for everything, and I, I judge myself based on this moral code that I just make up, you know. Well, I think a part of who you are is how you act individually, but most of it comes from how you act, live with others. Like, you can have the way you think about yourself but then there's all the other people in the world that have their own way to think about you they have their own images of you in their mind so you could have like one image of yourself in your mind but then there's like thousands of others images out there in the world and it's like you know which way more well really it's simpler than what i said before i mean my identity is pretty far removed from the arbitrary things that most people see you know it it has more to do with psychological continuity than it does with personality. It's like, you know, memories, experiences, etc. How do you know all this stuff? Are you like a philosophy major or something? <laughs> no, I actually never finished high school. Really? Then like, how do you know all this stuff with like, without like a traditional education? Hey, so what are you doing with all this camping stuff in the back? Are you like going on a road trip or something? It's a pretty great American tradition. Nah, I'm, uh, I should be going home. Should be, I should leave. Hey, so your middle name, what's the C stand for? Oh, it's just like this French philosopher who lived in Algeria. Anyway, if you change your mind about the road trip, I'll just be at that depressed vol back there. So, you can just find me. I'd be down. See you later. Checkmate. Bye, Orson.
here. What is that? It's your favorite. There's no way you know my favorite song. Stranger Mary. <coughs> is this spiked? It's spiked? <laughs> I just thought you'd like it. How are I'm pregnant. <laughs> yeah, right. Just like last time when you were still with Ted. Pregnant. Listen, Heidi, you can stop the charade now. I'm not I'm not gonna fall for it. You don't you don't have to fall for it. Well, it's kind of hot out here. I'm gonna go get us some water. Just wait under that tree over there. How well do you know my half brother? Hey Liza, now I'm just working on one of your songs and uh, I just got back home for break. Yeah, now I'm just working on one of your songs and it's really good, but I just don't think the recording quality does it justice, you know? Yeah, if only you lived here instead of Nebraska, right? <laughs> yeah, I'd totally record you if lived here. What? <laughs> I'm not gonna drive up to Omaha. Why don't you drive down to Texas? Nah, I guess I wouldn't be missing much if I left, but... Nah, they're good. You know. Yeah, they're just... Living, like usual. Person? I guess hypothetically, if I did go there, I could stay with my cousin. Just saying how ugly, right? Y'all are buds. Nah, money's not the issue. My dad pays for everything. He calls it... Investing in the future of his company. You know, you totally deserve attention. Plus, you know, be good to finally meet you in person. Not just over the internet. Yeah, I could totally be up there by Wednesday or Tuesday. Today's sixth day, right? Yeah. I just need to check on something before I go up.
was uh, looking for you. Oh yeah? Listen, think about what you said earlier. Yeah, well, you know, in, in Hindu philosophy, we're all part of a higher being, and this world was created as a sort of pastime for the supreme being, sort of a spontaneous release of energy. And, uh, you know, it's kind of like a kid playing make-believe in his backyard. And the, the whole practice of Hinduism is, you know, to realize and experience the reunion of your identity with the whole of Brahmins. We can think of ourselves as parts of a whole, you know, leaves of a tree. If you don't get all caught up in this game of make-believe, you might see that you're actually a leaf and you might feel the essence of the tree. Hey, you want to go to Nebraska? I think there are more corn stalks than trees, but whatever. You bet, man. Why Nebraska? Um, I have some friends and family who live up there and you know, they like play music and stuff, so. And I said I'd go and record them. Why? Well, you know, family helps each other out. You know, that's what I've always been raised with. You know, it's supposed to be the people that always say you can count on, all that good stuff. But, you know, I also like music production in general, so. If I had my choice, I'd be doing it for a living. Why isn't it your choice? My life's already decided. What about today? Think anyone will miss us when we're gone? Ready go. What the hell, Orson? Oh, oh, sorry. Must must be motion sickness. The nausea. For Christ's sakes! Hey, do you want me to drive? Nah, I got it. I wouldn't touch that if I were you, Orson. Ah, son of a bitch. Yeah. 
here. Here, use this. Must have a leak somewhere. Yeah, maybe. But even if we knew where it was, we couldn't do anything about it, so there's no point in worrying about it. Hey, we should really get back on the road. I promised Eliza we'd be there by tomorrow, so. Well, just, just give me a minute. I'm not ready to go back in the cage, Master, sir. Well, why did you agree to go on this road trip then? I mean, you, you knew you'd be in the van most of the time. Yeah, but not all of the time. I mean, look at it out here. It's beautiful. That, that for which I strive lays before you, not behind you. All the past we leave behind, we debouch upon a newer, mightier world. Varied world. Fresh and strong, the world we seize. World of labor in the march. All right, just, just get back in the car, Walt Whitman. Just enjoy the wild, man. I can't. I I mean, I enjoy the van so much more. It's way more integral to the trip anyway. I mean, it's purpose, it's sole purpose to be driven. The wilderness doesn't really have a purpose, it just exists. Purpose? Let me tell you a story about purpose. Once there lived a scientist and his favorite mouse, Chesterton. Actually, you know what, I'll, I'll just tell you later. Why don't you ever finish those? You mean my cigarettes? Why, do you want to finish it? Nah, I can't. What do you mean you can't? I mean, it's probably still lit. Alright, fine. I guess... The reason why I don't finish them is because I feel no obligation my cigarettes. <laughs> if I, they're not done before I am, I, they can finish themselves for all I care. I guess I should call a tow truck. <laughs> What's with you and should, man? It's always should this, supposed to that. Don't you have family here anyway? Yeah. My cousin Lee lives here, but I, I don't I don't want to bother him. I feel like such a burden sometimes. Well, I feel like you'd be more of a burden if you had a tow truck pull the van up to his house. I mean, is it like, aren't you supposed to be able to count on family? You can't count on a tow truck. He's just in it for the pay, but family's like all about the altruism. Hey guys! Lee! Orson! 
good to see been you. Been so long. How have you been? I've been I've been great. How have you been? Fine. Howard. Lee. Nice to meet you. Hey, is that Eliza in the car? I totally love to meet her in person. Eliza! <laughs> Good to meet you. You're even more beautiful in person. Thanks. I don't mean to be a fanboy, but your music has literally changed my life. Yeah, it's... it's good. Hey. How does Furlough at your service? If, if you're the singer that uh, Orson has been playing this whole time, I say your voice is the most beautiful thing I've ever heard. It's... yeah. So are, are you guys like, um... Uh, us two? Of course not, no. Yeah, of course not. Did, did you need the... The light is pretty great, huh? You're preaching the choir, man. Do, do you have a thing for her? Well, yeah, uh... Do you? Of course, dude. I think I'm gonna go for it. Yeah, I guess I, I would too if I were you. Or if you weren't here. <laughs> Selfless Horson isn't getting jealous, is he? I thought your whole duty was to help me pursue my happiness, man. Yeah, I guess. I guess I could help you. Whatever. Hey, are, are you sure Lee and Eliza aren't dating? Poor guy. Can you do it? So, um, Howard, how well do you know my cousin? I think I remember him mentioning you, but it's, I don't know how long it's been. So why, why are we over here exactly? Oh, uh, uh, it's just seeing you and Orson together. It, it just kind of reminded me of this, this dream I had about a week ago or so. In this dream, I I just woken up and I was getting ready for school. And my mom came in and she said, "Franz, hurry up, you're gonna be late." Who's Franz? I have no idea. And that's the weird thing about it is I was shocked by this. And normally in dreams, you just you accept things like everything's normal. But I was freaked out. <laughs> anyway, we talked some more and she treated me as if I was a different person, whoever France was. I got got school and it was the same thing. My my friends weren't friends anymore and kids I had seen before and never known were treating me as if I was their best friend. Then sitting in math class, which I always had trouble with, I was I was just solving problems like like they were nothing. And I was working on integral and suddenly I had this feeling that I was melting into my seat, and this guy, France, seemed to be slipping into my consciousness. I gradually became aware that I wasn't, wasn't alone in my body. I still had all the controls and limbs. I just started absorbing experiences from France. Then, uh, then I woke up. I could, I could still hazily remember things I've never done before. And it's, it was just, it was just really trippy. It was just all, it was just really trippy. Yeah. That's actually really interesting. Um, I actually found this, this study like a little while ago um, that they, they were like trying to treat epilepsy in the 90s um, and basically like the researchers were separating the hemispheres of the brain and like the patients 
experience two simultaneous streams of consciousness. Um, and anyway, it gives a whole new meaning to the phrase alter ego. But yeah, we should definitely talk about this more uh, some other some other time, yeah. stand for? Oh, well, it's just like this existential philosopher. He's a pretty cool guy, actually. He turned down a Nobel Prize in literature. Yeah. I don't think I turned down such a prestigious award. Well, he just didn't want to be confused with an institution. Like, he believed that a man sets like his own path and derives his own meaning from existence. So... I mean, I'm kind of the same way. I don't really think there's a path set for me. Well, I guess there is, but I don't need to follow it. Like, there are things like genetic predisposition and like your brain can form habits really easily, but I don't think you're necessarily fated to be certain things. You don't always need to follow the path of least resistance. It's kind of like there's not a current that's too strong to swim against if you set your will to it. Sometimes I wish there was a path. Flailing around with no direction seems like a waste of time. Well, that's the thing though, like, I don't really think that you need a direction to, like, like appreciate life. There's not really an answer for everything, you know? like. Kind of like solving, trying to find an absolute purpose is just like solving this multivariable inequality. Take 22x greater than 7y plus 56. Like, you can solve it, but only in terms of x. Never gonna exactly know where y is. Very true, like, you can find this area and narrow it down to where why is possible to exist, but you're never gonna exactly know, so I think it's it's pointless to try to pinpoint why. You're already kind of a slave to your own freedom, so you should just enjoy the tribulations of that. You really think life is purposeless? Yeah, in an absolute sense. Not really like relatively. You know, like Technically, my purpose is 22 sevenths x minus 8. I just input the values along the way. That's how I figure it anyway. So, the scientist instructs these mechanical opposable mouse thumbs for Chesterton so that he can create a world of his own. And at first, Chesterton makes this mouse wheel to run on, but he's unsatisfied with it, so he makes a companion for himself to while away the days. But the companion is hollow, and he he's unfulfilled again. What are you talking about? Oh, nothing. It's, it's not important. Cool.
Um, where's Eliza? Is she with Howard? We should, we should play together sometime. You play guitar? Yeah. Um, a couple things. Just around the house. I'm just here to record you guys. You seriously came all the way here just to record us? I mean, even when we're kids, you want to make a decision on a lark like that. Also, sing and write songs. So, I think we could have a lot of fun just messing around together. Well, there's our show. With music. We play a song there. Something going on, man? When? Fourth day? I'm just... I'm just trying to help you guys out. I mean, you should... You could show a little more appreciation. Sounds good. Come on, man. Come on. Absolutely not. I'd like to be clear-headed. <laughs> clear-headed? Well, sobriety is overrated. So is inebriation, but that's besides the point. What does it taste like? Well, only one way to find out. Yeah. He's gonna be pissed. So Chesterton grows up living in this cage that he's furnished for himself. And the scientist watches all along. But he starts searching for some sort of meaning, something larger than himself. And the scientist sees this and begins to give Chesterton some elaborate instructions. The instructions are to create a machine, a large machine with a small purpose. The purpose is to kill the mouse in the cage. Chesterton. Thank you. 
That's some bad news. I think maybe your files got corrupted. Something's wrong with the recording. Tried everything I could. Of course something went wrong. Of course, you guys can even fuck up everything. You and Howard. Oh man. Don't bring Howard into this. I mean, I'm, I'm the one that screwed up here. You two are all the same. Come to Omaha and act like you fucking run the place. I mean, don't hold us together like that. How Howard's the asshole. Well, current situation notwithstanding. I mean, just, just like, go up there and have fun. Just, just fuck off, or something. Hey everyone, I'm Lee. <coughs> this is Saltwater Sanctuary. That was really great. Yeah, yeah it was. You're a really good songwriter. I mean, that song was just packed full of all this meaning and intensity. It's really awesome. Maybe we are descendants from Mars. Maybe we are the youth on that means a lot coming from you. Listening to your music is like crawling in your bed on a cold night and getting under all the covers and then finding even more blankets underneath you, just waiting to make even warmer. Or something. Thanks. Have you ever thought about just like leaving and maybe like moving on to bigger and better things. Cause we're still expanding. Pretty soon we won't exist. No, we'll just be nothing. Honey, don't you throw a fit. Cause you're all energy. You're that to last forever. But if I die before you, if I fall in the ground, I can be happy. I feel like you could really make it, and we make a great team together. You mean like start a band and go on tour or something? Yeah, if you want. I'd love to. Cool. Um, I feel like we could make a really great life together. Be the first to walk on a planet gone wrong, and they will unlock. You promise? Where we yeah. But we're still expanding. Oh, great. We should get back there. You coming? Yeah, in a bit. Don't turn into a pillar of salt. It simply swirls. And maybe we aren't who you thought we are. Cause we hang here in space. Could have fallen from the sky. But the whole universe shakes.
just a bubble expanding. Orson, what is that? Is that tap water? It's got chlorine in it. Chlorine will destroy lysergic acid diethyl amide, dude. That's what's under your tongue right now. If you if you drink that, then you're you're not gonna get any of the effects. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I didn't know what was going on here. Have you ever done acid? is why I love Mary J. Blige. Really? Because penguins all the way across the fast when they incubate their eggs? Surprisingly, I, I know exactly what you mean. Dude, do you know about octopuses? What about them? Like, they could they fucking they change, they could ch change colors, like to match the surroundings, but they're, they're, they're fucking colorblind, dude. Like, they don't even know they're doing it. Like, it's just like, this weird fucking... You can see the whole Milky Way. Like, subconscious thing that they do just to survive. And, like, nobody knows why. They just do it. And, like... It's the whole fucking There's this one species called the Mimic Octopus or something. Uh-huh. But these ones... Like, if the predators go after them or something... They can... They can make themselves look... Just like the predator. Like, just like it. That's crazy. It's nuts, man. Well, what color are they when they hatch? Here's a shooting star. Dude, I don't fucking know. I'm probably going to figure that out. Oh, shit. Dude, do you want to finish the cigarette for me? Hey Orson, I don't really feel like smoking. Do you want this? Uh, yeah, okay, I guess. Is there an octopus being born in that fire? No, don't don't be silly, Orson. Wait. Man, is this what eternity feels like? I need to lay down.
corn's tall this time of year. Why are you freaking out so much? I've done this so many times. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I figured it out. What? They're gray. What? what is, what's gray? You're in a grave. What? Oh shit. Why is everyone dancing like scarecrows? 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 Hey, uh, does anyone have a... Wait, let's get it at the same time like we did last time. Are you managed to pay? Do you care about anyone other than yourselves? You make me sick. Me too, you brought him. You're equally responsible. I thought you cared about him. But you let him manipulate me. Like you thought I deserved it. You know what? I do deserve his attention. You two don't deserve to give it to me. I can't make it big, but you two just drag me down again. Just get out of here. Just go. Just go. Get out of here. Just fucking go. Not the only one keeping secrets.
guess you can see the appeal in this. I suppose people admire athletes the same way I admire musicians, just doing what they love. Why do you think I only used to smoke hand-rolled cigarettes? Those things have so many chemicals in them. You're, you're a terrible copycat. <laughs> what are you talking about, Howard? Yeah, well, you're a terrible fax dog. It's just a fucking waste of time. Anyway, don't tell me what to do, Howard. You're nothing like me. Which one's your brother, by the way? Oh, he's over there. He's sitting out right now. Number seven. He actually just got married, and he's got a kid on the way. Whatever, just trying to help you out. Huh. Hey, what was that thing with Eliza about, anyway? Oh, does he live here? No, he lives in Atlanta. I've been meaning to visit him, actually. Let's go to St. Louis. My brother said he's going to be in a water polo tournament there. Why don't we just go right now? I mean, it's not like we have anything better to do. Eh. Alright. I have your lighter, by the way. Just keep it. Oh, I wish I could hate this van. I wish I weren't the only one. Hey, Orson. Could you do me a favor? What? Could you get that fucking cigarette out of my face? And I can taste the meat from all the way over here. You should get that on my face. Don't don't be all pretentious and I horse vegetarian on me, man. Don't even talk to me that way. Hey! Hey! Good to see you. Hi, how's it going? Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So, I like the water polo thing. Yeah, you would like a bunch of guys from around the Speedos, wouldn't you? Well, I mean, you were the one doing it, so... So, it's so nice to see you again. It's been a long time since the wedding. Yeah. Does your, uh, does your dad know you on this whole road trip? Uh, to whom did you direct that question? Uh -huh. Um, look, if you were to stay the night, no drugs, no alcohol, pot, no cigarettes, no. Yeah, I put all that stuff on it. So. Okay, you just keep that in my house, alright? So this place is really great food. I told you to keep this out of my house. Yeah, I forgot that was, that's Orson's. I forgot that was in there. Well, it seems like you've forgotten a lot of things lately. Hope you don't forget the way out of the house. Where are you going? Scott! <laughs> so where are we going, Howard? Shut up. Fuck. Go and bring them back.
back. What right do you have to kick them out of my house? The white lady loves you more. So, are you nervous at all about starting a family? I mean, how did you know that this was best? So, Howard tells me you're going to be a father soon. Yeah, pretty excited. Well, what are you going to do if he doesn't turn out the way you expect him to? Like, what if you have nothing in common with him? Why do you ask? Well, actually, I am. How did this just good night? Is this spiked? Listen, Heidi, and stop the charade now. I'm not I'm not gonna fall for it. You don't you don't have to fall for it. How old do you know my half-brother? I don't. So how'd y'all meet? Hey, Dad. Hey, Liza. Now I just work out one of your songs and... Nah, I just got back home for break. Wait. Internship? Now I just work out one of your songs and it's really good, but I just don't think the recording quality does it justice, you know? Is there a company? Yeah, if only you lived here instead of Nebraska, right? <laughs> no, it'd be... Yeah, I'd totally record you if you lived here. It'd be fun to have you as a bus. <laughs> I'm not gonna drive up to Omaha. Why don't you drive down to Texas? Oh, yeah. I don't know the election's gonna come up soon. Nah, I guess I wouldn't be missing much if I left, but... No, they're good. You know. Yeah, they're just... Living, like usual. Orson? How about you? Um, I'm gonna do the absentee vote thing. I guess hypothetically, if I did go there, I could stay with my cousin. Just hang out with Lee, right? You're all buds. Nah, no, money's not the issue. My dad pays for everything. He calls it investing in the future of his company. You know, you totally deserve attention. Plus, you know, it'd be good to finally meet you in person. I just over the internet. Yeah, I could totally be up there by Wednesday or Tuesday. Today's six day, right? Yeah. I just need to check out something before I go up. Hey! What's going on? Oh, uh, we're just talking. Uh, look, if you know if... If you show your dad what you're doing on this trip, you know, like, uh... When you tape that girl, um, uh... You might show him where your passion is. And, uh... You know... Any father would be proud of this excursion you're doing. Um, you know, he might not even be mad when you get back, you know? Well, I mean, you don't, you don't know my family, so... Ah, they'll, they'll get over it. I don't think they will. There's only one way to find out. This was your grandmother's ring. Do the right thing. You gave him my grandmother's ring? He's being crazy. He's trying so hard to do the right thing. You're not his smart ever. He's not going to change. I know my own brother. He wouldn't have come this far if he wasn't serious. I'm not my own brother. Why, why are you looking through his things? Because he's a drug addict, okay? He's not going to change. Let's get out of here, Orson. Alright, where do you want to go? I don't care, just anywhere but here. Do you want to go back to San Antonio? I don't know. Do you? I don't know. Definitely not enough to try to convince you to. It's just not that simple. It's not that simple, Howard. Oh. 
nothing. It's, it's not really important. <laughs> well, aren't you the one that told me that things are simpler than they seem? You're just creating a problem for yourself. Oh, it's your turn. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. I mean, I was right. I just I hate feeling an obligation. It makes me feel so trapped. Well, hey man, just do what you want, but I'd suggest moving your night. <laughs> you're the one who was all about Confucian duty when I met you. Whatever happened to altruistic Orson? Hmm. Not my job, man. Owen, oh, checkmate. <laughs> I lost. Well, if the point of chess is to have fun, then I think we both lost. Let's go home. Tour? Get up! Just give me the keys. What? Why? You'll probably crash anyway. Get up! Howard! Oh, oh shit. Holy shit. Orson, are you alright? <laughs> Fuck you, man. Like, you care anyway. Hold on. Pull over. I, I'm gonna be sick. Right now? Yeah. Guess not. Of course not. I swear you're just here to slow me down. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, son. I just, I, f I feel like dead weight a lot of the time, but I'm really trying. You know, you really should stop smoking. I mean, I, I'm the one that got you started. I feel like a bad influence. I think it's my responsibility to make you stop. It's not. It's my choice. Don't walk away from me when I'm trying to talk to you. Why Why would I want to talk to you, Howie? I mean, you act like you're all cool, but you're just, you're a failure. Like, what have you done? What have you accomplished? You just, and stop calling me son. Fucking loser.
What what can I do? Hey Orson, do you want to give that guy a lift right there? No. No way, man. He probably smells like wet moose. Oh, come on, it's all hot and humid. You probably can't help it. Would you even thought? Whatever. You, you just do the talking. Thanks so much for picking me up, guys. It's so hot and humid out there. And I think I smell like wet moose. Mm -hmm. Shut up. Shut up, son. So, uh, where are you from? Oh, I'm from Canada. I came down here to see what America was all about, you know? Okay, so that's... That's cool. Are you just like traveling around then? Yep, just pushing my boulder. <laughs> That's kind of ironic. We were just at a gas station. Well, it's been fun and everything, but I think we're gonna go catch a ride with someone else. Thanks for everything, man. I'm just gonna go uh, get my bag, all right? Oh, I forgot how heavy this thing was. <laughs> Take care. Yes, you. Howard, be a deer and reach my cigarettes, would you? Yeah, all right. It's not... The ring's in there. Hold on. That, that's, that's him on the beach. You ever heard of the absurd Orson? Uh, can't say I have. <laughs> well then. So, there's this ancient Greek king named Sisyphus. And uh, he, he was the cleverest and the craftiest of all the ancient Greeks. And uh, he would often use his cleverness to uh, steal and betray others, right? And uh, he even outsmarted death twice. But uh, eventually all this outsmarting, outwitting, and crafty got him into so much trouble that he ended up in Tartarus, the Greek version of hell. And uh, as his punishment was that he had to take this huge boulder and pull it all the way up to the top of the hill, only to see it roll all the way back down. And then he'd have to roll the boulder back up to the top of the hill, and as soon as he got to the top, it'd roll back down again. On and on and on and on. Which I guess is a fitting punishment to show that all his <laughs> cleverness was futile and all his toil fruitless. Of course, that's really how we live each day, right? Just uh, live and then we die. And any difference that we made in the world dies soon after we do. But is that really enough to make us stop rolling the boulder? Well, maybe. I mean, like Sis Sis Sisyphus, we're damned to do it. I guess we love the struggle so much that we refuse to realize that the hope of Making the boulder stay at the top of the hill is a false hope. We continue then to just push out product after useless product and we have to be proud of our work. But I mean, even with the realization, I have the realization, and yet I'm still happy. I relish in my accomplishments and trudge through my failures. Because let's just say, hypothetically, hypothetically, I get my boulder to the top of this hill. Then what? I mean, I'll probably push it down myself, right? I mean, you know, what else is there to do, really? Yeah, that's interesting, I guess.
it's okay. It's almost over. Everything's fine. and stay in the car. Hey. Oh God, what do you want? I just want to talk. Yeah, well you made it pretty clear before what you really wanted. I was stupid. Can we just try to... I'm actually going to hang out with friends. C can we talk there? No. Heidi, please. Oh God, just leave me alone. It doesn't sound natural to me. Feels like he's trying to go for something that the singer isn't. Hey baby. Howard! Long time no see, man. How you doing? You still right. jamming? Yeah. We should yes. get a jamming sometime, man. Actually, I'm on my way to my friend's house right now to play, if you want to oh. come with. Yeah. Uh, okay, I guess. Do you... Well, do you... Do you want to ride? No. Cool, 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 cool. What, what do you mean? I feel like he's doing spot on. Like that. Sounds good to me. Come on. Just just you want to jam? Come on. Just one fight. I don't uh, feel like it. Come on. I really don't feel just like one jam. I really don't Come on. Just one jam. jam. Right, Heidi. Just just one fight. Come on. Right, Heidi. You want to hear the jam? Just do it. Give it time to 
<laughs> yeah, man. That's what I'm talking about. That was real good, man. Real good. It was great, bro. No, it wasn't. That song shouldn't even have drums in it. It was just, it was just awful. No, it wasn't. Not bad, man. I was just trying to drum to your song, bro. I didn't mean to ruin it or anything. Come on, guys. Hey, that's just uncalled for. I'm sorry, Howard. This shit wouldn't even know emotion if it slapped you in the face. Yeah, I'll just slap you in the face, asshole. Dude, you're, you're just all sitcom characters. What the fuck are you calling a sitcom character, you Jared Leto motherfucker? Get out of this house! He's the one that's actually. Did you invite him? I will burn this house to the ground! Oh, him. <laughs> him. <laughs> Name is now him. Yeah. <laughs> want to make things right. She thought about it before you made it wrong. Just tell me what to do. There's nothing you can do that already hasn't been done. Ted's already doing it. He always was. always used to say how much of a Jesus freak he was. Well, at least he has morals. He doesn't go around laughing at everything like he's better than it all. He knows his place. I should have never broken up with Ted. I was stupid. <laughs> you were just a rebound. I guess that's how it is, then. I didn't know. Well, you know a lot less than you think you do. I don't think you ever knew anything about me. Harrison. Hey. Could I bum on the stove? Hey. Yoink. So Chesterton, after some time, finished the machine, and somewhere along the lines, found out what it was for. So fucking talking about that mouse? What happened with Heidi? What day is it? Uh, three's day? No wait, four's day technically. Ah oh, shit! I have to go talk to my dad soon. Do I just like... Yeah, okay. I mean, um, why not?
So, is it worth it? Not sure. Yeah? You should get used to that feeling. You could have told me sooner, Orson. Sorry. You know, I know you don't believe this, but I do know my own son. I, I know you're not happy. I know this whole business thing was for my sake. Music producing, right? Yeah. I just wish you uh, could have told me sooner. Could have saved a lot of money. You don't suppose any of those uh, courses could transfer over to a music producing degree, do you? Most of the basics should. Okay. How about this? Uh, you and I would go um, half and half on the tuition. How's that sound? Yep. I used to think that uh, you really believed. You wanted the security of working for my firm. And that music was just a hobby. I only want you to be happy. Are you happy? I wasn't till till just now. So I don't think I know your middle name. Oh, it's just Elliot. As in, I should have been a pair of ragged claws scuttling along the seafloor. I think you're missing my point, though. Okay, now go on. Chesterton finished the machine and he just looks at the scientist. He sees the anticipation sh shining out of the scientist's eyes back at him. And he he looks at the machine that he's made and he looks at his companion and exercise wheel. And in that moment, Chesterton just realizes like all that he's been working for and every Everything he's made is just not for the passion or the love, the pursuit of love or happiness. It's, it's not what makes him push through the struggles of his life. Really, the, the great motivator has been, in fact, boredom, just the whole time. Boredom. So... So, like, what does he do?